I painted this little model recently as a test piece for some slightly artistic painting that I'll be doing at some point. Essentially, it was to paint entirely with environmental lighting, and all of that is totally irrelevant for this video, but I thought I'd mention it as what I'm going to be making is a backdrop for it. And that's because it does kind of stand out on the shelf. It's quite different from my wasteland models, uh, it doesn't really fit with my historicals, and it certainly doesn't match any of my fantasy models. And then of course I'm perfectly happy with putting models that don't quite fit you next to each other in an artistic sense next to each other on a shelf, because the variety is quite cool, but it got me thinking about framing the model in some way. As a side note that actually isn't a side note in the slightest, we got some furniture recently and they came with these corner protectors. It's just a simple plastic corner piece that protects the corner of the furnitures and then you chuck them in the recycle when you unpackage it. But... Ain't they just about the right size for a model to stand in? And this model is just the one I was thinking about not fitting with other models and having a background. Well, that sounds like an interesting project Given that this is a test piece model, if I'm going to do a test of a background, I may as well put this model on it. So I cleaned one of the corner protectors up and I primed it. And let's see if this plastic even takes paint. It's quite flexible. You can just about see in the video here that there is a rough texture. And I thought it might be dust, but it is actually a rough texture of the plastic for some reason that it just has. This will help with paint sticking to it, but it will hinder because paint will soak into it and I'll have to paint in certain ways. As my cyberpunk model is quite a saturated purple and pink, to contrast that I felt like a desaturated kind of grey and blue-grey would make for a good look. And I poked around on Google for some blue and teal cyberpunk cityscapes. Unfortunately, searching for artwork has really degraded in recent years for reasons. If I put a model into the corner protector, or this specific one in the pose she's in, she really does look good pointing to the right, kind of running down some walkway in a city. And so, on the side behind her, I'll put a door. And on the other side, kind of beside her as she's running past, will be a wide open cityscape. I started by stippling down some blue in the lower middle of that side, up to a blue-grey and to a grey at the top. And instead of going for a smooth blend, which would have been quite difficult over the texture that the plastic has, the stippling will actually add into that, kind of lean into that in a way, and bring it along as a bit of a feature. That kind of rougher blend will add to the aesthetic, rather than the smooth one, which would have a different feel. And to give it that little bit of a vignette feeling as well, I stippled black around the edges of this panel. And that gives me the overall colour tone, and I felt it was pretty much what I wanted, and so I need to add some detail. Using the paints that are already down on my wet palette, I just lined in some building outlines, vertical lines joined at the top, with the odd diagonal here or there to add that kind of future science fiction feel. I used some black and I used some grey and I went over it again and again, especially around the corners with the blue-grey. I felt like the buildings would be darker than the backdrop, but at this stage I really was feeling that this really foggy nighttime kind of scene, or I guess it would be smog as this is a cyberpunk city. And so to darken the buildings down to make them stand out from the fog, I used a darker blue, surprise surprise, but I only glazed it on, and this left the tonal variation in the underlayer still visible, but a darker overall look. And the texture that I mentioned in the plastic earlier really drank in the glaze, and I probably could have gone for a couple of extra layers here to really push the darkness of the kind of silhouette of the buildings that I wanted, but I did only do one, and so they're a little more subtle than I may have liked. But there was something that really made them not look like buildings, they were just shapes at the moment and I had to work out what it was that was missing. Even looking through the inspiration images didn't help that much as they were just better than my painting and they didn't actually have any extra feature that mine didn't have. But I realised something. Windows. 
what says City's Skyscraper in the simplest and most cartoony way possible than a grid of bright dots to be the windows. Work with cheats, not skill. Whilst I did give a little bit of effort to having them lay out in an even grid, but reaching into this little half box of the corner protector wasn't that easy. And to make the city feel a little more lively, I left quite a few gaps, as not every window in a tower block would be lit at any given time. My close-up building on the right posed a little more of an oddity. I had intended for it to feel much closer, hence it being higher in the scene. It's not actually taller, it's just kind of closer up and the perspective makes it higher in the scene. But that means that the windows are also going to have to be larger than the buildings that are further away. Now you can probably tell that I'm using the same pink that I used on the model, which might help the model fit into the background, the kind of unifying pigments idea. But what I'm not using here is any sort of guide or grid that would make my windows, even in any way, shape or form, line up with each other. Adding to that the soaking effect that the plastic is having means any time I have even slightly over thinned the paint, it just fades into the darkness. Which kind of fits the theme in a way in terms of the kind of glow of the windows emanating out from the window frames. Uh, but really it's just me being bad at painting. For this building, as it's closer, I did fill in the empty gaps with black to show the darkness of the unlit rooms. There's still plenty of space for something more interesting in my city scene here, and as anyone with a basic grasp of the colour wheel will know, the background is blue and blue-grey, my model is purple and pink, remember that purple is red and blue, and pink is light red. So if I bring in a few tiny spots of a richer, darker red, that will complement the background and it will complement the model. That's just a theory, a colour theory. It's a cyberpunk cityscape, of course, and what would a cyberpunk city be without some corporate advertising? And so for my red, a couple of little signs seemed appropriate. I don't want a lot of this red, just a few small spots. And I did maybe cheat a little bit by bringing in some yellow for some fake lettering on the signs, but they did come out pretty much how I wanted them to. There is a tiny bit of dead space at the bottom, and my mind instantly went for a road, some overpass, or a high-rise magrail, perhaps, passing between the buildings. I threw some of the red, as that's what I was working with at the time, in a straight line to make this road, but it was way too much, too dark, and right next to one of the signs that I'd just painted, so I pivoted pretty much straight away and dredged into the last usable pigment that my nearly completely dried up blob of pink paint had and highlighted that up almost completely. I test fit the model for a moment to realize that this whole cityscape was just way too bright. And so I went back to my glaze idea that I had earlier for darkening the buildings, but this time I'm darkening the entire frame. And rather than the blue, I'm actually using purple. And this is the same purple I used on the model Again, we're tying pigments between the model and the background, which will help them fit together. Well, that glaze is going to take a moment to dry, and once it did, I felt like moving on to the other side to give myself an idea of how it's going to look. I didn't necessarily feel the need for quite as much blue this time, and so I just started working from the grey primer. But I did add some of that black stippling around the edge to maintain that vignette feel. Cutting the corners off of rectangles has become the age-old shorthand for Hey viewer, you know this is science fiction, right? So that's what my doorway got. In the same way, an uneven locking seam in the middle rather than a straight line gave that sturdy blast door feeling, as well as being just more visually interesting than a normal doorway would be. I kind of got into the flow of painting these lines, and so I ended up edging all of the shapes with the black I was using, just little striations offset from every single line. And that makes everything just that little bit more interesting without changing the shapes. I tried a little control panel and a lockbox before moving over to a lighter grey to basically do the same thing again, all of those offset edges. And this kind of gave a bit of a 3D effect. 
With a light and dark line on every edge, it sort of tricks the eye into feeling that there's a chamfered edge on all of the metalwork of the door. Now, if only I'd have planned that out, I could have really leaned into it and made it look good. And I messed around back and forth with some extra details, a little of my blue-grey for some colour, as well as some lines of black. But I didn't think it needed anywhere near as much as the cityscape side, as that was always going to be the more interesting side. But just like the cityscape side, the door side of my little scene needed darkening down, and so I mixed myself up a black glaze, and I could have used my black wash, but it was actually faster to, build, to just mix my own with the paint I had to hand, because yes, it's just that easy to make washes and glazes, stop buying products instead of learning skills. They're really easy. But overall, that's pretty much done. A stand, a backdrop, a background, a vignette, a plinth. I'm not really sure what to call this other than a fun hour that I had painting in a way that I really don't usually paint. This model was a practice piece that I threw paint at to show myself what I needed to learn for when I kind of do this paint job properly later on. And in the same way, this backdrop was a test to see how this sort of thing works. What kind of style adds to the model, what are the difficulties of doing it, both physically and artistically. And obviously I didn't do a stellar job of my cityscape, but it didn't need to be. In future, I could easily paint a much more detailed, I could take several hours over painting the panels, and I could fit them to different models really nicely. What we mini painters often refer to as freehand, essentially is what we're doing here. But this is just painting on a flat surface like a normal real painter would do, rather than filling in molded pieces by the numbers. I quite enjoyed this little project, and I have a bunch more ideas for the other corner protectors that I have. I might just be convinced to paint up a bunch more of them for some more interesting models. A desert, perhaps, for my wasteland models, a forest for the Tanith. The possibilities are endless. Well, unlike the possibilities, this video does have an end. So if you have anything to question or to comment on, post that below. But for now, I'm Edgar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.